I think that we've got everything that we're looking for here in the Yukon because we want adventure, we want the hard miles, we want to earn it. And you have to earn it. That's why we love it. If you walked out the door and you got something, you know, straight away, then it wouldn't be a challenge and we'd be doing something else. It's getting out and suffering because I think the animals deserve to suffer. You have to earn to be able to harvest an animal, in my opinion. And I think we earn them. So for me, this is actually pretty exciting because I know that if we're able to get this moose, it'll be Carl's biggest and, you know, he's been behind the camera all year. So now it's in the dying hours of the season and he gets a chance to pull the trigger. So if we do this stock properly and don't mess anything up, it should turn out good. So yeah, it's just late October and out in the mountains and the snow and Hunting moose isn't your typical way to hunt moose, but this is a really great area and we haven't been here very long. It's just really hard to get to, so hopefully that uh, we do everything right. But, and if we do do everything right, we'll be cooking tenderloins tonight over the open fire. Just trying to find a route, best route up there. Obviously, we'll use that lake. I think I see a decent route from here. I think if we go off the lake, depending on how steep it is, down into that drainage, yeah, I think we can we can get up through there. We won't really know till we get there though. With the lakes being frozen, that's great. We can travel the lake, so the less impact the better. How's the country look from here? Any different? Uh, it, no, it, we're we're in a great spot from here. Still there, bedded down. Right. But I think we should put the scope on them. Really get a good look at them. Okay. They're just in that willow draw. They're just going to stand up and feed in that draw, do their thing. Yeah. See him? He's over here. Take a good look, buddy. Yeah, he's turned a little bit too. Getting... Yeah, you see that right front on him? That's great. A little bit of palmation. Yep, I like that. What kind of range do you think we got on him? It's probably a little past your comfort zone. <laughs> 1275? Yeah. I think it'd be pretty darn tough to turn him down, Carl. He's got a good front. Decent width on the palms. You know, he's a high, like 59 inch bull. He's a great mid-October bull. He's kind of got it all. He's down below. We can't see him. Can't see him. He's dropped down into this drain. I'm like super excited right now. Yeah. I think I get more excited when you're pulling the trigger or my dad or somebody else than I do when it's me. And maybe I shouldn't put this on you right now because I know when I'm the one pulling the trigger, it's just tunnel vision to get you know, focus on what needs to get done and don't get excited. So if I'm getting you worked up, I apologize. Carl, you want the 300 or the 7 saw? I'll go 300. I think if we grab our stuff and we go straight at that, at that rise, we'll come up and we'll be able to see him. We'll get up there and we'll find him and then, yeah, make the plan. Yeah, absolutely. Is it back to zero? Yep. So that's ready to go for 200 yards. Okay. Okay. Moving Let's do it, buddy.
says, I'm going to give a call. And he'll probably stand up. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. I'm ready. Okay. He's looking. Okay, let's try a grunt. I think it's safe to say that the rut is officially over. We've been sitting here now for over an hour, 550 yards. I've called, Cal called, I've both called. The rut is clearly over, but we gotta get this moose to stand up because Carl's gonna get cold sitting in this snow. And then once it is in the snow for too long, start shivering and then it's all over. I'm gonna go over here and just move around a little bit, do some more calling and then moving and maybe that'll uh, stand him up. This is kind of last resort here. Are you ready for a wolf call, Carl? Yeah, I'm ready. Just give a howl, see what, see what they do. Six point eight, Greg. Saw somebody. Oh wow! He's blind. Yeah, this eye is totally shut. Holy! Yeah, that eye's done, and you can see bone all through here. You did him a favor, actually. Wow, that's as bad as I've ever seen. He must have just got hooked and just oh, gouged. Look at that. No wonder he didn't want to get up. Man, that is painful to look at. Now the rut is hard on those bull moose, hey? We do a lot of hunting post rut and we've come across a lot of bulls that have been, if not mortally injured, you know, it's just, you're wondering how are they gonna make it through the winter? When you watch two big bulls fight, it's something to witness. It's nature, it's raw and it can be very brutal. So there's a trend that's happening here. Each moose that you take gets better and your shots seem to get further to the point where now that was 550. And uh, later in October each time. <laughs> it's later in October. <laughs> yeah. Carl's got himself a, a great moose. So good job, buddy. Thank you. Nice yeah. shot. Yeah, it was quite a, you know, adventure coming back in here. This is not the front range where we are now, it's the back range. It's yeah. the back range and full of snow. Yeah, I mean, we're not home yet, but uh, we got our moose, so that's a good start. Freezer full of meat, that's for sure. No doubt. Night is here. It's dark. <laughs> We've taken the uh, insides out of him, and he's gonna cool off for the night, and we're gonna try to get back to camp while there's still some semblance of light that we can still travel by. Doing it at night, head torches, that's when guys get cut. I have a habit of getting cut. <laughs> Heart? Sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to eating this heart. That's a heart shot right there. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, pretty pleased with that. Here's dinner for tonight. Fresh moose tenderloin. We'll get that fire going tonight. Get these steaks on and yeah, enjoy the long dark night that we've got ahead of us. <laughs> it's very nice to have a fire out here. But we've been out in the minus 40s, bison hunting, and you don't do it without a fire. When things go wrong, in the dead of winter in the Yukon and you're out by yourself, it can go real bad real fast. It's great to be back out here and the moose hasn't moved any. Hasn't moved at all. <laughs> and he looks just as good as he did yesterday. Absolutely. We're pretty lucky in that, you know, we live in this 
you know, almost empty place where adventure is, is almost everywhere. Like it's hard to avoid adventure. So how could somebody, if they live in a place with more people and easier access, how would they make their own adventure something like what we're doing? I think adventure is what, kind of what you make it. And everyone has a different level of, of adventure. And I think that because we live where we do is probably at the highest level. You can just look to where you feel comfortable and then look to push that comfort level. And that's where you find the fulfillment. And we push our limits in hunting all the time. And I think that's why we take such great pleasure in it. And they're hard. One of the things that people don't understand about the Yukon and, and Alaska is that there aren't hundreds of thousands of animals just running around. People have this perception that there's just animals everywhere. It's just a harsh environment, which makes it harder to hunt. And you just have to put in more time and more effort and just more hard work, which also brings up the adventure level. I think that we've got everything that we're looking for here in the Yukon because we want adventure, we want the hard miles, we want to earn it. And you have to earn it. That's why we love it. If you walked out the door and you got something, you know, straight away, then it wouldn't be a challenge and we'd be doing something else. It's getting out and suffering because I think the animals deserve to suffer. You have to earn to be able to harvest an animal, in my opinion, and I think we earn them. Not quite home and one machine down. We believe that it's an alternator issue and we don't have a spare alternator. This is the part of the adventure. Just another day.